on a Tuesday night in the South Loop. It was a battle of college preparatory schools. In this edition of the 2022 Chicago Public League, Jones College Prep hosted Northside on their seventh floor gymnasium. However, the Northside College Prep Mustangs turned out to be a rude house guest to start off the contest, never trailing in the first quarter. Northside's biggest lead was as large as five points. Here, some quick passing off the inbounds play leads to an open mid-range jumper for Kate Shingler. The junior center took advantage of the opportunity to give her team a 9-4 edge with just over two minutes to go. Shingler had a chance to increase the lead at the charity stripe, but she missed both free throw attempts before the intermission. Buckets were simply hard to come by for both teams in this one. Down by five, Jones College Prep made some huge adjustments during the second session. They were lethal on the fast break, and this delicious dime by Mia McRoberts allowed Rachel Shetler to net the easy layup. Just like that, the Mustang lead is now the Eagles up by one. The Eagles would score four more points to make it a 14-9 cushion and a 10-0 run. Carolina Rundelli knocked down both of her free throws to put the pressure back on the Mustangs. However, Shingler's pump fake and then subsequent mid-range bucket made it a one-possession game once again. The Eagles would go up by two possessions once Shetler made one of her two free throws. It was 15-11 Eagles as we went to halftime. The third quarter was all Jones CP as the Eagles led by as many as 11 thanks to a tough two-pointer in the paint by Bailey Zaleski. Up by nine, the Eagles seemed to be in cruise control, driving into the lane. McRoberts looked to have an and-one basket. However, the nearest ref determined she traveled prior to a shot attempt. As a result, no foul call and no basket awarded. A huge break for the Mustangs, and they took full advantage of their new life. Desperately needing a bucket, Anna Mulderink knocked down the wide-open J to cut the deficit down to seven. It was the two points the Mustangs needed to fuel the comeback, and a ferocious comeback effort indeed took place in the fourth quarter. Hustle and never quitting was the name of the game for NCP. Olivia Petrillo couldn't capitalize in the paint, but Tessa Myatt nabbed the rebound and got the second-chance bucket. Mulderink then boxed out well from the mystery corner, and with no one back on defense, she used her speed to her advantage. It's now 22-20, to 20 Eagles. Moldrink was huge again on defense. She interrupted a perimeter pass, but she just couldn't net the breakaway layup. No worries, though, because Captain Shingler was there for the putback and the game-tying two-pointer. Would the Mustangs finish the run with a victory? Not so fast, my friend. Zaleski was determined to not allow the Mustangs to embarrass her team on their home court. Barreling her way into the lane, she connects on the layup and draws the contact for the and one. Head coach Henry Henderson wanted an offensive foul, but the officiating crew gave the benefit of the doubt to the offensive player. Zaleski would make her free throw to make it a three-point game. Moldrink once again clogged up the passing lane, but she just couldn't finish on the breakaway. Chloe DeForest got back in the play in time to force a foul. If Moldrink knocks down both free throws, it's just a one-point deficit. However, it simply wasn't the Mustang's day at the charity stripe as Moldrink missed both of her 15-footers. Without a shot clock in place, the Mustangs are forced to foul to stop the clock. Grace Monaco wisely hacked McRoberts to extend the game. McRoberts missed her one and one, but nobody boxed her out, so the junior guard got another shot with the clock stopped. Her second shot went in, allowing her a second free throw attempt. She was perfect at the line during this series of events. Patrol then tried to get her team back in the game, but Taylor Yaklich's contest on defense forced up a circus shot that JCP easily rebounded. Zaleski fell on her chance to ice the game, but the Mustangs had a lack of communication on offense. Credit to Jones CP for some confusing defensive rotations, and Moldering's pass went to no one in the corner. Monaco couldn't save the ball, and that pretty much did in Northside. NCP eventually fell 28-22 to to Jones. A tough finish for the Mustangs, but Shingler explains why her team's defense became their offense during their 11-0 run in the second half. Yeah, we had a trouble scoring in the second and part of the third, but I think we also... Um, we switched to man and I think it helped us bring our aggression levels back up and we were out to, able to get out and run and get fast breaks and I think that's when we play best. Meanwhile, leading scorer Carolina Rondelli said Northside's slow half-court offense was tough to deal with, but they made some big adjustments late in the fourth quarter. Most importantly, we changed the momentum because we usually are a faster-paced team and we played against them and they, their strategy is going slow and passing the ball and we, needed, we played their game instead of playing ours. Overall, it was a fun night for high school basketball in the Windy City. Reporting for Sports Broadcast Solutions, I'm Kyle Smith.